Good morning, everybody. My name is Bill Woodcock, and welcome to another edition of Forward Maryland. Today is Saturday, October 17th, 2020. Uh, it is a solo episode of Forward Maryland today. Jason is busy. Uh, you know, he's taking what he's given because he's working for a living, as Huey Lewis in the news used to say in the 80s. So, uh, you know, we hope, wish Jason well, and he will be back with us on Wednesday. And that gives me the opportunity to mention our next couple of guests on the podcast. Uh, State Delegate Vanessa Atterbury from Howard County will be our guest on uh, this coming Wednesday. And then uh, th this coming or next weekend, uh, we will be welcoming um, former uh, Howard County, actually, I believe he is current uh, Howard County Board of Appeals member and former candidate for County Council in District 3, Steve Hunt, to the program and get his unique takes on politics, uh, local, state, and national. And it is with local focus that we bring with you, uh, bring to you today's podcast. Very pleased to announce or, or to uh, introduce our guest for today. Her name is Roxana Segovia Beltran, and she is the founder of a one of the many organizations or several organizations that have cropped up uh, very recently uh, with the uh, pandemic. Uh, her organization is called Howard, Howard County uh, Harvest United, and she is the founder of that organization. Roxana, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I, I first wanted to say that I, I do appreciate the help that I've gotten from Will and Julie because they actually have been a very big part of this program as well. So um, I'm glad that you guys, you know, you're giving me this platform to be able to discuss details about what Harvest United is. Yeah, so Ro Roxana, we got a, our connection to Roxana from my son Will, who himself has been a guest on this show. So, so uh, I know he's very pleased to know that you're on today as well. Mm -hmm. um, so tell us a little bit uh, about Harvest United. Tell us a little bit about your mission. And yeah. About how you're at it. Yeah. So I, I do want to also explain my background story as I explain how Harvest United came to be. So I'm originally from California, and I lived in I've lived in Howard County for about two years. And I started gardening when I was in college. It was just something that I learned to do when I was in college because I was like, hey, I want to grow food. And it was a beautiful experience because I, I was in college and I had like blue corn and broccoli and it was a really fun thing. And since then I've lived in Georgia and I've gardened in Georgia. And now that here in Maryland, we're starting to like, you know, have our gardens here. So gardening is just like one of those hobbies that like I really enjoyed, but really understood the full meaning of what gardening can do for the environment, right? I myself have been um, very much in environmental issues here in Hoko. I am part of the Less Plastic Please, which initiated the plastic bag fee, right? So we were able to get that done. And from there, I facilitated drawdown workshops. Uh, project Drawdown is a climate change mitigation project initiated by, by Paul Hawken, which essentially gives solutions to climate change, but like real solutions like that ev everyday person can do, like getting to the like how I as a person, what changes will I make for the future, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I facilitated this workshop. And if you're familiar with what drawdown is, like the definition of that, it's the future point in time in which the level of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere stop climbing and start to steadily decline, right? We just have like less carbon in the air. Like how do we do that? So from there, with like my environment, you know, it's like as a gardener, I like to garden, but all along this journey, like I very have been very uh, particular about like my own habits. Like for instance, like I partly cloth diapered my children. Mm -hmm. I, I compost, like all these things that like over the years that I just have always done. And recently, like I did um, practice zero waste in terms of like what I do and how I buy so that I actually like have as little trash as possible. Those are all things that I've just incorporated into my life. So getting back to when the pandemic started, right? Things weren't looking that great for the environment already, <laughs> but then like the pandemic happened and really it didn't make it any better. Mm -hmm. There was a, a huge problem that happened is 
a, redu a result of extra waste, right? Mm -hmm. For instance, people cannot buy in bulk. And when I say buy in bulk, I mean going to like Sprouts with your own container printed in so that like you actually don't use any more plastic for like a bag of beans. You just have your one container, right? We can't do that right now. Mm -hmm. So, and from that, um, a waste does lead to higher CO2 levels, right? Because it just turns into methane, it's, just, it's super bad. So that has been a huge issue since. And a much more, I think, personal issue in terms of like what's happening with people is like food security has become magnified. It, had, it was an issue before and now it's magnified. So here we have like these huge problems coming because of the pandemic, but that doesn't stop like the, the huge problem of climate change, right? So then how do we get to a point where we're here already in this issue? We can hardly even think about the climate, but in a sense, like how do we get there? Mm -hmm. And so Harvest United really is about connecting environmental advocacy with just like the act of gardening and the act or our sustainable habits that we choose to do. So I think if I were to describe like the mission, like in, you know, like, okay, I just said a lot, like what is your general mission, right? And that is climate change mitigation. Mm -hmm. But like- yeah. The, yeah. This, is, this is very interesting. And there are a number of, of things I think about this, um, you know, but, but what I hear is, is uh, you know, yeah, uh, climate change, it's, it's more than gardening right? Uh, what you do. It's, it's uh, understanding the impacts of climate change, uh, like you said, mitigating those impacts and, and realizing the effect uh, on a very local basis. Exactly. And also when it comes to garden and really like growing local food, right, and combining our yields so that we have this communal gardens program because locally grown food makes a difference when it comes to the climate, right? Because think about like all the energy that has to come from like Mexico in order to get to Maryland compared to like Brizzy Willow Farms. Like we pass, we drive by and we're like, hey kids, that's the farm where you get your food from, right? right. Making that connection. So um, and also the type of teaching gardening styles that we really advocate are for, for everyone, right? We have like the hydro gardens program, which teaches hydroponics because hydroponics can be more um, available to, for people that live in, don't have land, right? Just live in apartments, but still want to grow, right? Still want to be connected to those plants and have those plants because they're so nutritious. But also we really advocate for regenerative gardening uh, we are uh, very much connected with the Community Ecology Institute and they have these beautiful victory gardens that they're work we're working on and we really advocate for those because that is a practice that heals the soil and it, it's a very important practice that needs to be um, really pushed more. Mm -hmm. so, so how long has Harvest United been in existence? Since the pandemic. Okay, so it has been a very recent thing. So. So, so what are some of the projects that you're working on or, or, or are most proud of? Well, I have to say this past summer was just a really beautiful experience, to be honest, right? Because just like Columbia Community Care, like it was like this inspiration to like, hey, there's an issue. So what can we do? And I was very much inspired by Erica and had many conversations with her and, you know, she really gave me a lot of support for this, which, you know, I really do appreciate. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, along with the Community Ecology Institute, like now they are our drop off and pickup site, right? And we've done workshops there. And also working with the national groups as the Cooperative Gardens Commission. And this is a group that actually gave, gives seeds to people that like want to start these kinds of programs. And, you know, we receive seeds. And through all that work, just within the summer and starting like in May, like we donated about like 300 hydroponic plants made with repurposed materials, seedlings, and countless seeds. So like it was just a lot was like being able to like accumulate in such a short amount of time. And really like there was an additional investment for like my own family in terms of like nutrients and just like net cups, things that like cannot be donated, but really everything was donated. I would say like 99% of it. And I really think that like spoke to truth about how 
a powerful a community can be when they really hear it right and this is just branching off like this huge organization station that was started and then like these are like do 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 which i'm not the only one right there's so many out there they're like well we're giving school supplies and we're giving this and it's a beautiful thing so i think i'm really proud of that and I, i'm really grateful to be here to be honest i do feel that hoko has received me well like being here just for a couple years so yeah, well that's terrific and and i'm glad that you have felt the the uh the welcoming nature of this community so sometimes people don't always feel that here so thank you for that um another question i i have is is so so a little bit of my background is that um i was the chief operating officer of the baltimore city health department for oh. Year. So uh, one of the projects that I worked on was the issue of food deserts in the city, mm -hmm. um, and uh, of course access to you know have getting more residents access to produce uh, than to liquor or tobacco, uh, for for example, um, you know and I and I see Erica's a, a friend of this show we we've had her on. And uh, I was telling a friend of mine just this morning that, um, you know, Oakland Mills Middle School, which is very close to me, is always busy um, every day and every time that Columbia Community Care is, is out there. So, um, and that's a good thing because people are being helped. Um, it's also a, a sad and solemn thing because people need the help. Um, so I guess just to kind of draw you out on something you said, I mean, what has been um, the receptiveness in the community uh, to, to um, you know, helping educate people and, and what I'm hearing, you know, show people how to be uh, not just good climate warriors, but uh, more self-sufficient? It's been great. I do think that during the summer, especially, it was more about food, right? It was like, okay, like, like this garden, because, like, you know, gardening was on an all-time high during the summer. Like, everybody was a gardener, right? And I did meet a lot of people. They're like, I have a black thumb, but I want to grow. And I'm just like, here, like, take this little hydro garden kit and see if you can make it work. And then it didn't work. And they're like, what do I do? And I'm like, here, take another plant. Let's see, like, what you could do different. And then maybe it didn't work again. And they're like, okay, this time, check the plant, right? <laughs> like, and making sure that people um understand like how this is a process right and i think people were very receptive to the idea that like if you just if i gave you the seeds and you had the plants could you make it grow and it was also it was almost like a challenge to themselves like okay maybe i can do this and i think it's so important in this time to have that right there's this really beautiful quote that says uh, you must cultivate your own garden Mm -hmm. But in this quote, it's actually less about gardening, but, but more understanding like your own needs as an individual, right? Mm -hmm. And gardening can be very therapeutic. It is known to be a therapeutic. So I do think like people received it understanding that like it can really make a difference in their lives if they really like push through. Yeah, I mean, I mean, um, you know, well, Will would tell you that I have told him this story many, many times, but when I, as, I mean, I, I, I currently, I, I will vouch and I, I feel I have a very black thumb, a uh, very deep, deep black thumb, but, uh, I, but I've told my kids the story of um, when I was growing up, we tilled and we grew a garden uh, on about a quarter of an acre on the back of our property, and this was in Elk Ridge. Uh, and we raised everything depending, you know, on the season. We had corn and onions and peas and tomatoes and cabbage and lettuce and zucchini and beans. And, you know, even into the fall with, uh, you know, pumpkins and, and peanuts. I mean, I mean, we, we raised, if, you know, it was a thing that would grow, we, 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 we cultivate and um that was that went for about three or four years uh onions uh only stopped growing wildly there uh in the early parts of the 21st century but uh from uh from the mid 70s on that was pretty good so um i i, I would agree with you that that it's easier than people think and 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 that people you know in you know um 
you know, you can raise a garden in Columbia. I know people seem to be concerned that after my time on the village board, people seem to have that question whether they could. They thought that the community gardens were the only opportunities to have a garden. But as you so, you know, you so ably raise, people can grow stuff indoors and you can grow things um, outdoors too on your own properties. Yeah, I agree. And it's also about, it's about teaching like how to grow based on your situation. We have a lot of people that were doing pots mm -hmm. and, you know, for next year, like I really want to give a lot more information on the right type of pots to use and also how to, in general, not just with pots, like address gardening when it comes to the climate change effects, right? Like, the, you know, the floods that we you know, we got like this, this past year, you know, there was like these huge rains, I don't know if you remember, towards like the end of September, and then uh, all the pots got flooded, right? <laughs> and people were very mm -hmm. disappointed about that, understanding like, hey, for next time around, we got to have a cover, mm -hmm. right? Like, because like, we, we need to understand like how we will have to change or even grow garden so that like we're understanding like the best way to actually get food, right? Mm -hmm. So... Right. So, so, so you bring up a number of, of different interesting things. So, um, you're, you talked about next year, which, which makes me think about, which makes me think about what, what is it that you have in store? Um, you know, I find your organization very unique. I'm not sure, you know, what is like it that exists. Certainly nothing in Howard County. I'm, I'm thinking about you know, this whole little Baltimore, Washington region. I mean, of course, there are gardening clubs and there are climate change organizations, but there's not a merging of the two. I, I know there's a little bit of urban farming stuff that goes on in Baltimore City. Um, so what are your, what are your, you know, you just started just this spring, you know, what are your plans for growth? There's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so the, the biggest thing I want people to understand about Harvest United is that there's no charge for seeds, plants, and access to programming. Like this is a program that like, it is my goal that like no one has spent, like no one has to give me money for this. Now they can give me some plants and some seeds and some buckets, that's fine, but like I will not charge for this, right? Mm -hmm. That is my goal, right? But how are you funding all of this? Who's paying for this? Well, a lot of what we receive is like from repurposed, con like for instance, like we have like these buckets and we just go in from a fast mm -hmm. place and they give, they have so many buckets that they throw away, they're like pickle buckets. And okay. so we're, we, we don't pay for it because they're like, here, I wasn't gonna throw it away anyway. And we use those buckets and turn them into compost bins. So oh, isn't that wonderful? I'm, it's like, I'm not paying for that, right? So, and there's just other ways that we've kind of like tweaked so to really reduce costs because we're also understanding that like all this stuff that we have, like, hey, instead of throwing it into like the waste of landfill, like how about we just try to use it and mm -hmm. like make money in the process? So that's one part of it. But um, the thing that we are working on for next year that it's actually gonna start this year, but it, it's called the Student Learning Guide. And I am a homeschooling mother. I, I have really been involved in education since like I was in college. Like I, I tutored all throughout. I, I used to be a doula and I taught childbirth education and breastfeeding education and very much women's advocates. So I've been, been an ESL teacher. So I've taught many different things, but I've really have been, my focus has been like an adult education. So I call it the student learning guide because we do want it for children, but we also have to understand that like adults can be students as well. And we are teaching ourselves and understanding how to teach that to our next generation about what it is to be a sustainable person, right? Like how do we sustainably? Because I do feel like as a mother that, that my actions really set up the future of the next generation. Cause like really what is expected for the future, right? Or like my children, I have a five-year-old, like when he's my mm -hmm. age, 30 years from now, like what are we expecting for him? Declining water supplies, reduce, reduce agricultural yields, the health impacts in cities due to the heat and the pollution and flooding at the same time. Mm -hmm. What tools do they have really for mm -hmm. this? 
none. <laughs> like they don't, like, right. what are we providing them right now? Nothing. So right. this program is providing those tools. So when the mm -hmm. fires continue, the glaciers are continuing to melt, the mass consumption of plastic is just spinning out of the control, they have armor. Mm -hmm. They understand, okay, we know what I should be doing right now. Maybe I should be composting. <laughs> Maybe I should be gardening. Maybe I should be like using habits that provide as little waste as possible so that I'm not continuing to fill up these landfills that are just like, destroying the earth but like on a such deeper level now because it's 30 years later mm -hmm. right well, I, yeah i so i there was a few things i think i i react to when i hear what you said um you know first off um again being a howard county parent um you know when uh you know when when my kids did outdoor education you know, I remember my own home ec experience in Howard County, and I'm pretty sure I remember we grew flowers and put them against the uh, windows of the classroom so they got sun, so we learned how to grow flowers. But when my kids did outdoor education, it was awesome that they got out to appreciate nature and understand wildlife and the environment and everything else. Um, I would have loved it if, if they would have tried their hand that growing some plants, you know, and including some, some plants that they could use for food. And, and I have to wonder, of course, there's a lot of issues going on with the Howard County public school system. Now, I, I don't know what educational systems in this state uh, actually ever do a, a module in, in teaching kids how to grow food. Um, you know, you don't have to be a huge uh, agricultural person. You don't have to be a 4-H'er uh, to, to learn and to appreciate the concept of growing your own food. So, I mean, I don't know, completely unsolicited suggestion, but that's something that, that you might you know, want to consider. Um, the other thing that strikes me and, and you know, um, you know, a lot of how my brain works is that when I hear something that's great, I, I think of arguments against it, right? Because people tend to You're like my husband. <laughs> people tend to, well, people tend to poo-poo <laughs> idealists, right? So so I already come up with ways to, to block the poo-pooing. And, uh, you know, and, and I can hear, you know, skeptical people say, well, you know, one, 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 you know, if, you know, the six people on my street all do all that stuff, you know, it still doesn't, you know, uh, offset, you know, two minutes of carbon coming out of a plant in Mumbai, or what have you. And um, I, I guess my urging on that is, is local impact. Um, Maryland and Howard County have very high cancer incidence rates. Um, you know, that's not an accident. I mean, this is a very busy metroplex. There's, there's a very, this is a very busy area. And I think there's enough science and data to show that uh, when you do act on climate change locally, you see the effects and the benefits of that locally. Um, you know, what goes 200 miles into the atmosphere, yes, that can be changed with action on larger fronts and on other levels. But in terms of what we do here, um, it does matter. So, so I, I thank you for bringing that, bringing that forward. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah. do you need, so how can, so I mean, I, I can't imagine that with these plans that, that even though you may not need any money, you certainly might be able to use some resources, some volunteers, people to help you. Uh, you know, I mean, what, what can people do to help and, and how can they get in touch with you? Okay, so first of all, I did not say we, we wouldn't appreciate money. Like, I would hope so. <laughs> I would say, hey, we got to give money to these people, to, to, to you guys. But so, yeah, yeah so, I mean, so first let me tell you about the student learning guide and exactly how it's going to work. Yeah. So essentially, this is going to be like a joyful rhythmic approach to sustainable living. This is what I'm calling it. Like, I don't want people to do this and feel like, oh, God, I have to save the world. No, like I, I want people to enjoy this because when we enjoy things, then we, I think we go much further with it. I think and I, 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 that has been shown, right? Mm -hmm. So 
The end goal is in spring. We, were go we are going to plant as many vegetable and pollinator gardens all across the region, right? We're, we're just gonna, we're gonna have this goal in mind. And we are going to be using a curriculum from um, Bess Kaplan. She um, wrote this beautiful like, ecology uh, curriculum that I'm going to be providing. And she's a local Howard County resident as well. And um, this curriculum itself teaches you how to get to there. But you know, it also gives a lot of beautiful information about ecology and ecosystems. There is like a, an educational component in there that people can also integrate. But then just know that these are all choices. Like no one's going to be asked to do everything. We're going to kind of give almost like an a la carte, right? Like, okay, so here's a, here's a little plant called a hydro garden kit. Take care of it gardening. Oh, if you also want to compost, you can get this. If you're really interested in a pollinator garden, here's some seeds. But the, also the bit, other part of it is like, obviously, like we need to do a lot of collecting at this point if we're going to get there. So we also, this is a service learning project where um, we do have an end goal. And it's very, I really see it kind of like a scout program where you know, students can get together or, you know, churches or families to kind of like plan out like, okay, where's my pollinator garden going to be? Where's my vegetable garden going to be? And as a whole, like how do we collect all the things? One of the things that we're hoping to start is a community composting program. Mm -hmm. And we're talking with um, Community Ecology Institute. Um, to kind of make this like a soil site where with these buckets that we're going to provide a five gallon buckets, people make the compost, we teach them how, and it's just a five gallon bucket. It's all the space you have, then like, yeah, let's just do the five gallon bucket. We put into a, like a community area where people can either, you know, keep for themselves or also give back to them. ECI because they have beautiful gardens that they need plenty of compost for, but also look for other com community composting sites, right? It can be like a church community composting site, like really lay it out like as a community, like how do we do this and we do it in rhythm, right? So right now is a good composting time. We're going to talk about composting. We're going to be talking about leaves, how these beautiful leaves that fall like should be stay on the ground because that's how like we build pollinators for the next season there should be leaves on the ground, right? right. And um, over time, we, we have a blog that we're gonna connect to this so people can look at it and understand where to go. And this is gonna be a beta testing program. This is the first time we're doing it, obviously we're so new. So we really want people that are looking to start with this, take a survey, what do I know? How do I know? What do I like to know? Stay with it towards the end and at the end say like, did I actually learn to something? Because this will be refined, evaluated and tested until it is effective. That is mm -hmm. the goal in this. So even if someone does not have like a student with them, they can mm -hmm. also be a part of this because we do have the Facebook group and that people um, are a part of. And we want really people to see how they can stay with this and continue to be a part of Harvest United and to learn about like what it could really do if, you know, we put, tiny bit more, just a tiny bit of effort, right? We don't have to do everything, but. Yeah, this is terrific. I was listening as I was like, ooh. So I was glad you said the last piece because I was listening, I was like, ooh, I'd like to try that come the spring, why not? <laughs> so that's, that's very neat. Yeah, and it's fun. Like, I think we need to find a way to make this fun because the doom and gloom of climate change news is like one of the worst things, right? Like another iceberg melt melted right like the fires and like yeah. and then people turn themselves off they're like I, I just can't like and then and then we're in a pandemic but this is a way to turn themselves on to it and say like hey like what if I enjoyed the pollinate garden I grew in the spring it gave me something to look forward to right right and and yes the you know the the news that you know the the news I, I you know we all have uh tolerances towards that right? Uh, there's only so much even I can watch. Uh, but but yeah, the, I, I agree that this is a great way for people to do something enjoyable, uh, learn, and also do something that has a larger benefit. I, I think this is a wonderful solution. Um, so how can people how can people get in touch with you? I mean, you mentioned over the Facebook group, but is, which I is, Howard County Harvest United, right? It's just Harvest United. Oh, it's just Harvest United. Yeah. Uh, already thinking of, 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 of expanding beyond these mere borders. So, oh, yes. There, there's no borders with this program, I think. That's awesome. <laughs> so how, how else can people reach you? 
So we do have a website, harvestunite.org. And mm -hmm. on there, um, when you go under programs, uh, you'll see the student learning guide and there's a there is a presentation on November 12th. Um, we're going to do it until after the election and that kind of that happened. <laughs> And so um, on there, I'm going to have like just like a lot of more details, right, about like what the student learning guide is, like how to be involved with it and really to ask questions. I want people to ask questions because I know like I say these things and you did you did say something very true is that this is a very unique program. And sometimes when you're too unique, people are confused by you and are put off by you like the confusion of like, I, I can't register what this means to me. Right. So I do want to answer those questions to the best of my ability because if anything, this is like a project. <laughs> but yeah. um, so on there also uh, a, a way that, you know, to celebrate our, our website that was actually just done a, a few weeks ago and I did get a lot of help with that and we're very grateful for that, not having to pay for it, right? Um, is uh, we're doing a grow, a raffle or a grow light set. So when I say grow light, it's like literally just like this like light and like a little timer that you put over your plant and then it helps you grow indoors. So we have three that we're raffling off. So if you go to harvestunite.org under get involved and it says raffle, like you fill out the form and say, yes, I want to join the raffle so that maybe you can get your head. And so it comes with a grow. If you don't have like a, a indoor plant, like we give you the indoor plant too. And right oh. now, you know, uh, chives, um, oregano and basil so but just to let everyone know like um, we are looking for more plants so if you have like any type of herb garden please like go in there there's a part that shows like if you want to donate we are looking for those because uh, we have like a, a new program we're going to be using working with a PG uh, mutual aid effort that we're going to actually be giving them some plants too so mm -hmm. like you said we, we are uh, you know we my first school is like the, the DMV area but um, to be honest, like I, I'm originally from California. I've lived in Georgia. Like I, I don't feel like this is not doable in other places because I lived in other places. So like, why not? Right? Like, <laughs> you're already expanding. Howard County. County, and you haven't even been doing this for a year. So that's terrific. Yeah. So you want to be a part of us? I'm always available to talk. And if anybody wants to donate, that is very much appreciated as well because. Yeah. Um, you know, the bigger we go that this, yeah, realistically, we will be needing more funds and we are looking into becoming like an official nonprofit. So that is, uh, you know, the works as well. So um, any much support, uh, support is very much appreciated on the other end of like, okay, like nonprofit starting and stuff like that, because we're looking for that kind of information as well. So I'll help. Well, That's good. The difference. Roxana, this is amazing. So I'm, I'm very glad that we, we connected and I'm very glad that you came on the show and do uh, consider coming back again. We'd love to have you uh, or if there's, you know, just anything you want us to, to plug um, that you're up to, but, but certainly as you get closer to the, uh, the rollout of the, of the program in the spring, you know, do, you know, do give us a ring again because, you know, you'd be welcome to come and, and promote it. Yeah, and definitely. I, and I would love to see your pollinary garden as well. I want to see pictures of it. Oh, Lord. Oh, now the pressure's on. Well, well <laughs> I, have, I cannot, of course, write while I'm doing this, but uh, it's hard enough for me to talk while I'm doing this. But uh, I, I do have, I did make a mental note for November 12th. So, so that is, that is if memory serves a Thursday. So, so. Uh, oh, wow, you have a good memory. How did you do that? <laughs> on the third and that's a Tuesday so nine days would make it a Thursday so so I, I have that uh, I have that mental note already and I and I hope to be is that a zoom the presentation or yes it'll be a zoom presentation okay well, I look forward to being part of that then well thank you so much William and again I do appreciate all the help that we have received not from just from your family in general like, I do think uh, uh, there's a very special uh, heart in your family that I, I do I do notice well, thank you. We try. Um, you know, it's important to pass being helpful to others, uh, you know, down through the generations. Both my kids, I think, have adopted that, and, and their mother was very much the same way. Uh, I will, however, uh, spare the story of uh, which of my kids use cloth diapers and which one we did not use cloth diapers on. <laughs> it's going to embarrass both of them, so another time, perhaps. All right. 
So Roxana, thank you very much for coming on. And like I said, you're welcome to come on again anytime. Thank you, William. I appreciate that. And thank you, everybody out there in viewer and or listener land for uh, watching or listening this edition, to this edition of Forward Maryland. We will be back at you on Wednesday evening. Until then, have a great weekend, everyone. Take care.